These characters aren't quite heroes, but not quite villains either. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Broadway anti-heroes. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at anti-heroes in Broadway musicals whose moral complexity makes them fascinating figures. Number 10. MC Cabaret Welcome in Cabaret, oh Cabaret to Cabaret Whimsical and Cavalier, this character is the Master of Ceremonies or MC of the Kit Kat Club in 1930s Berlin. Commenting on characters and events within the show, MC serves as the narrator of Cabaret. Initially, MC mocks the Nazi party that's taking shape in Germany. But as the show continues, he normalizes the movement, goose stepping in a kick line and mocking Jewish people in a number with a person in a gorilla suit. But if you could see her, so my eyes. She wouldn't look Jewish at all. MC is a poignant example of how casual indifference helped lead to the rise of the Third Reich. Joel Grey, who played MC in the original 1966 production of Cabaret, won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his portrayal in the 1972 film adaptation. Number 9. The Witch, Into the Woods Nothing is what it seems in this play, including the narrator. Usually witches in fairy tale stories are villains who are out to hurt the protagonist in some way. I'm not good, I'm not nice, I'm just right. I'm the witch, you're the world! However, this witch is different as her motivations aren't quite so simple, and her backstory is somewhat tragic. Her beauty is taken from her after a man steals from her garden, and she takes the man's firstborn child as payment. Even after she kidnaps a child, the witch raises her with the best of intentions. Though she keeps the child locked in a tower, we find out that she does it to shield the child from the horrors of the world. Stay a child while you can be a child. Number 8. Dr. Frankenfurter, The Rocky Horror Show This flamboyant mad scientist who describes himself as a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania serves as a strange host to Brad and Janet a wholesome couple who are stranded during a thunderstorm. Well, you got caught with a flat world. How about that? Well, babies, don't you panic. At first, he appears gracious to his guests, giving them a tour of his castle and his laboratory, but he eventually seduces them and turns against them. Ruthless when he has to be, Dr. Frankenfurter has no problem holding people against their will or killing them. Although he is sinister, He's also fun, so you can't help but root for him. And I realize I'm going home. Number 7. Jane Pierpont Finch How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. A noble tide it binds all human hearts and minds into one brotherhood of man. A lowly window washer, Jay Pierpont Finch wants to work his way up at the Worldwide Wicket Company. By reading How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, the ambitious Finch learns how to achieve this goal by following the steps laid out in the book. Unfortunately, to get ahead at the company, Finch has to act unethically by deceiving his co-workers and bosses, and repeatedly throwing Bud Frump under the bus. Finch's hard work and savvy serve him well, as he makes chairman of the board at Worldwide Wicket in two weeks. Yet there's that up, turn, chin, and the grin of impetuous youth. Whoa. Number 6. Aaron Burr, Hamilton I'm the damn fool that shot him. In Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical, Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton are depicted as sharing a close friendship. Despite their mutual admiration, Burr is seen as Hamilton's foil, 
with Burr being reserved while Hamilton is more daring. Hamilton doesn't hesitate. He exhibits no restraint. Takes and he takes and he takes and he keeps winning anyway. Their friendship suffers when Hamilton becomes successful by taking chances, and it ends when Hamilton endorses Burr's opponent Thomas Jefferson in the 1800 presidential election. After Burr kills Hamilton in their infamous duel, he shows remorse for his actions, believing that he will forever be seen as a villain. Like John Wilkes Booth in Assassins, the audience is left with a whole new perspective on a historical figure. Number 5. Billy Flynn, Chicago A superstar defense lawyer in 1920 Chicago, Billy Flynn has a knack for showmanship in how he dazzles juries and spins the press. Highly sought after because of his impressive record, Flynn becomes Roxy Hart's last hope when she goes on trial for murder. Where are they now? Six feet under, but she was granted one more start. The convent of the sacred heart. When making legal arguments in court, Flynn often twists the facts to suit his case. Or if that doesn't work, he cooks up false accounts altogether. Though he pretends to care about Roxy while he defends her, the only things that Flynn cares about are fame and money. All I care about is love. All he cares about is love. Number 4. Phantom. The Phantom of the Opera. A deformed outcast, the Phantom inhabits the Paris Opera House in the late 19th century. Hiding behind a mask, the mysterious figure is afraid to show his face because he knows how hideous it looks. He loves Christine, one of the actresses at the Opera House, and is desperate to seek her affection. Turn your thoughts away from cold and the Phantom goes as far as to threaten the Opera House's owners to give Christine a lead role in their production, or he would wreak havoc during the show's premiere. Though the Phantom loves Christine, he realizes he must let her go so she can be with Raoul, the man she truly loves. Number 3. Judas Iscariot, Jesus Christ Superstar Having been the apostle who betrayed Jesus, Judas is one of the most despised figures in Christianity, yet Jesus Christ Superstar gives a sympathetic portrayal of the man. The audience comes to see things from Judas's point of view as he begins to question Jesus, a man that he had spent the last few years of his life following. Don't you see we must keep in our place? We are occupied. Have you forgotten how put down we are? Judas becomes disillusioned with Jesus and feels the need to set things right, though he ends up taking actions he regrets. He is just the same as anyone I know. He scares me so. There is pain and conflict that comes with his decisions. Number 2. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Motivated by revenge, Sweeney Todd wants to kill a judge who tore apart his family and sent him to prison on a trumped-up charge. Oh, that was many years ago. I doubt if anyone would know. When he gets out of prison, he sets up a barber shop where he slits the throats of his customers as he's become a misanthrope who believes everyone deserves to die. Because the lives of the wicked should be made brief for the rest of us, death will be a relief, we all deserve to die. Though it is understandable why he's bitter, his resentment sends him down a destructive path. Sweeney Todd is a cautionary tale of the monster we could all become if we get obsessed with revenge and violence. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. A bad place, a place uh, 
Well, let's just say it's filled with symbolism and things like that. Say, Officer Lockstock, is this where you tell the audience about the water shortage? Whoa, 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 whoa. George looks around. He sees the park. It is depressing. George looks ahead. George sees the dark. George feels afraid. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Number one, Javert, Les Miserables. Throughout Les Mis, Inspector Javert tries to track down Jean Valjean, an ex-convict who went to prison for stealing a loaf of bread and violated parole. A stickler for the rules, Javert believes that only good men follow the law and only bad men break it. To Javert, it's irrelevant that Jean Valjean only broke the law to help feed his sister's son. Once a criminal, always a criminal. That those who falter and those who fall must pay the price. It's only when Jean Valjean shows Javert mercy that Javert begins to question his own moral code. Though Javert is a cold-hearted character whose ethics lead him to commit horrible acts, he does earnestly believe that he is right. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.